Timothy Williamson turned epistemology upside down in his 2002 Knowledge and Its Limits. It's a long, difficult book, but stay tuned, and in less than five minutes, you will understand how Williamson pushed contemporary theory of knowledge on its head. An analysis is a breakdown. For example, when we analyze water, we find it's composed of the more basic elements, hydrogen and oxygen. The same goes for philosophical analysis. Philosophers break down an interesting concept, like free will or lying, into more simple components to get a better understanding of what it is. So what about the analysis of knowledge? Well, since the time of Plato, knowledge has traditionally been broken down into belief, truth, and justification. In other words, to know this is a great horned owl is to believe it's a great horned owl, when it's in fact true that it's a great horned owl, and you're justified in believing it's a great horned owl. This is called the JTB account of knowledge, and it's an excellent analysis, except for one thing. It's wrong. In his famous 1963 article, Is Justified True Belief Knowledge?, Edmund Gettier destroyed the JTB analysis with facts and logic, and 10 coins. Now that's a story for a different video, and there are plenty of them out there. Here, it's enough to say that ever since Gettier, philosophers have been hard at work trying to come up with a better analysis of knowledge, and nobody has really succeeded. Enter Timothy Williamson. Williamson argues that the JTB analysis is flawed because any analysis of knowledge will be flawed. Why? Because it assumes knowledge can be broken down into more basic parts. But what if it can't? Remember, an analysis is an attempt to understand something in terms of something more fundamental. But what if knowledge is the fundamental thing? This is Williamson's core idea. In a slogan, knowledge first. In other words, when doing epistemology, we should start with the basic idea of knowledge, and from there, we can get a better understanding of things like justification and belief. It's the old switcheroo. Switcheroo! Switcheroo! For example, Williamson says to believe something is to treat it as if you know it. If I believe there's a giant sequoia in front of me, then I'll walk around if I need to get to the other side. I won't foolishly walk straight ahead. And if someone asks, hey, what kind of tree is that? I'll say, it's a sequoia. You see, these are the behaviors of someone who takes himself to know there is a giant sequoia in front of him. Now, of course, sometimes we get things wrong. If this were actually a cedar, well, then I've got a false belief. But still, Williamson would say my belief was an attempt at knowledge. An attempt that misfired, sure, but I was aiming at knowledge, and that's what a belief is. Notice the change of direction here. Instead of explaining knowledge in terms of belief, a justified true belief, Williamson is explaining belief in terms of knowledge. A belief is an attempt at knowledge. It's treating something as if you know it. Or consider justification. How would I be justified in believing there's a sequoia in front of me? Well, I might know that sequoias have small rounded cones. I might know that sequoias have a distinctive red shreddy bark. And it would certainly help to know that I am standing in Sequoia National Park. In short, my evidence base is composed of the things I know. And if any belief of mine is justified, it will be justified by any relevant knowledge I might have. So again, Williamson has turned things around here so that knowledge is helping to explain justification. It's only what I know that can do the work of justifying my beliefs. To sum things up, knowledge is primitive. It's fundamental. It stands on its own. It's not the sort of thing you can break down into more simple parts. And by flipping things, by putting knowledge first, we can save epistemology and send it off in a more promising direction. At least according to Timothy Williamson. <laughs>